Welcome to Overthinking Eurovision. I'm Matt Rather. Over the past year, Ireland broke our hearts in two ways. First, there was the sad fate of Brooke Scullion, 2022 Eurovision competitor and overall lovable goofball. Hey, stupid! I nearly fell. <laughs> Thank you for your vote. <laughs> Pretty much every time she opened her mouth, something amazing happened. Do you know what the saddest thing in the world is? Lobsters in a restaurant watching people eat their friends. And on top of that, she had a line in one of the most iconic Dairy Girls scenes ever. Catholics watch RTE. Protestants love cleaning. Protestants are taller. That was her saying Protestants love cleaning. Oh, also her Eurovision song was pretty good too. Which is why it stung so badly when she was eliminated in the first semi-final. On the bright side, she seems to have bounced back nicely, appearing on Ireland's Dancing with the Stars. She even did a samba to Chanel's Slow Mo. But Brooke's elimination was not our only Irish disappointment. In early February, Kerrygold Irish butter was pulled from the shelves of American stores because its packaging apparently doesn't comply with California's new ban on hazardous chemicals. Ireland, I don't even want to know the details. I was single-handedly propping up your economy buying this stuff by the container ship load, so don't start leaving comments that, hey, toy to toy, in Ireland it's traditional to wrap the butter in asbestos. Just fix it so I can make a decent omelet again. So anyway, in 2022, Ireland tried sending the sweetest person in the world, and that didn't work. So in 2023, they were given the option of going in the completely opposite direction. One of the competitors in their national final was none other than John Lydon, aka Johnny Rotten, the lead singer of the Sex Pistols. And although he came in fourth out of the six songs, we still want to discuss him because he is an extremely interesting guy. How many other Eurovision contenders do you know who have been depicted in the Danny Boyle miniseries? No future for John, is it? Oh, God save Johnny. Humpty Dumpty Johnny, we all fall down. Here's a table comparing the number of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees who have submitted songs to Eurovision before 2023 and then since 2023. It's doubled, guys. But unlike ABBA, the Sex Pistols refused to attend their induction ceremony. Instead, John Lydon posted a handwritten note which began, Next to the Sex Pistols, rock and roll in that hall of fame is a piss stain. Like I said, he's an interesting guy. So I promise we'll discuss the song Ireland actually did select for Eurovision. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Sex Pistols. Here's the opening lines of their single, God Save the Queen, featuring Leiden's iconic voice. God save the queen, the fascist regime. If you release that song today, Piers Morgan would spontaneously combust. I'm not saying that's a deal breaker. But just imagine it coming out nearly 50 years ago, when half of the British population had lived through the Blitz. The worst of the punk rock groups, I suppose, currently are the Sex Pistols. They are unbelievably nauseating. They are the antithesis of humankind. Now imagine it coming out during the nationwide celebration of Queen Elizabeth's 25th year on the throne. Wowzers. Or as they say in the UK, blimey. The song was so controversial that workers at the factory where they were making the records laid down their tools and refused to work. But despite being banned by the BBC and most radio stations, this song was a massive hit. And Johnny Rotten, 21 years old at the time, was the ringmaster of the whole media circus. He gleefully told reporters, We're the only honest band that's hit this planet in about 2,000 million years. But that was a different time. Perhaps we thought that so many years later, with punk rock safely neutered and commodified by the establishment, Johnny Rotten had lost the ability to shock us. Then he threw his hat in the Eurovision ring. Eurovision is a lot of things, but it is not very punk. The idea that the guy behind Anarchy in the UK wanted anything to do with it struck many people as bizarre, maybe even sad. For people who grew up in the 70s, this man was the ultimate symbol of countercultural rebellion. Johnny Rotten was one of the main inspirations for Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker. So when Michael Caine says, Some men just want to watch the world burn. Johnny Rotten was the guy they had in mind. And now here he was, submitting himself to the artistic judgments of Jedward. 
Yeah, but I'm not so sure if it's a song for the Eurovision. Like, obviously, if it was another competition or just a solo single by himself, we'd all go, yeah, that's a happening. But, um... His Eurovision bid is only the latest instance of his late career eagerness to cash in on his lingering fame, which included a trip to the jungle on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and a stint as the jester on The Masked Singer. Add to that his increasingly conservative political leanings, and it feels like Leiden is best summed up with another iconic line from The Dark Knight. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. But in this case, John Lydon has a very good reason to seek the Eurovision spotlight. In 2018, he announced that his wife Nora was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. His Eurovision entry, Hawaii, is a love letter to her about a vacation they took in the 1980s. You and me. In an interview with The Guardian about Eurovision, Leiden explained, I'm doing it to highlight the sheer torture of what Alzheimer's is. It gets swept under the carpet, but in highlighting it, hopefully we get a stage nearer to a cure. Let me step back for a minute. We're not saying that Ireland should have picked Leiden's song. For one thing, Hawaii isn't the kind of song that does well at Eurovision, and for another thing, Leiden has said some pretty shocking things about women, gay people, and other topics. A country's Eurovision act needs to be a cultural ambassador, and Leiden doesn't have a diplomatic bone in his body. But the group that Ireland actually did select has its own set of problems. And we There's not a whole lot of information about the band Wild Youth. You'll notice on the Wikipedia page about Ireland's Eurovision participation, the band name didn't even have a link the day after its selection, nor did either of the two band members credited as songwriter. However, this co-writer definitely had his own page, and he's definitely not Irish. Jorgen Elofsson is an old-school Swedish hitmaker. As a teenager growing up in the 90s, I listened to this particular work of his like a million times. You drive me crazy, I just can't sleep. You drive me crazy, baby. More recently, he was one of the songwriters behind Kelly Clarkson's massive hit, Stronger. But more relevant here is Elofsson's long partnership with the Irish boy band Westlife. While the youth actually did shows with Westlife, and it makes sense that they'd share some songwriters. Elofsson also wrote the Irish Eurovision song from 2017. Dying to Try finished 13th out of 18 in the second semifinal, failing to qualify. So not a great sign there. On the other hand, look at Leroy Sanchez from Spain. That guy co-wrote their 2021 Eurovision entry, which received only six points. But the very next year, he co-wrote Slow Mo, which got 459 points and was their most successful entry since 1995. Here's our issue with We Are One. It feels very deliberately engineered to win Eurovision, while at the same time completely misunderstanding what kind of songs actually win Eurovision. In our video last year about the four ways Eurovision gets political, we talked about the shared values the contest promotes. Nice shirt, Matt. One of those values is pluralism. Eurovision is all about coming together to celebrate differences, which is exactly what Wild Youth is singing about. This is basically an unironic version of Love, Love, Peace, Peace. We Are One could totally be one of those slogans they select for each year's contest. Oh wait, it actually was the slogan in 2013. So it might seem like Ireland is doing something very savvy here, writing a song that could be an anthem for Eurovision itself. But here's the problem. Although the song certainly captures the Eurovision spirit, Eurovision winners are nothing like this. Generally, the top songs have deeply personal meanings and unique sounds. Ukraine with a rap song about mothers, Italy with a rock song about how boomers just don't understand, maybe Croatia with whatever this is. One of the things we love about Eurovision is that generic pop songs almost never win. To come out on top, you need some spark of originality. 
And no offense to Wild Youth, I'm not hearing that spark. This feels like a Eurovision song written by ChatGPT. Just to be clear, we don't have anything against pandering to the audience, if it's done well. That just means you understood the assignment. Give That Wolf a Banana last year was meticulously designed to do well at Eurovision, but at least it was fun and reasonably successful at what it was trying to accomplish. What makes We Are One annoying is that it panders badly, leaving us with a generic song that is not going to qualify for the finals. I know our track record of predicting these things is poor, but we're pretty confident this time. We will apologize to Ireland if this song qualifies, and if you guys fix the Kerrygold butter problem. You can say a lot of things about John Lydon, and many people have, but he has never cared about giving the people what they want. When the Sex Pistols imploded after only one album, Lydon formed a new group, Public Image Limited. Their debut single, Public Image, was about how he felt misunderstood and constrained by the Johnny Rotten persona. Instead of embracing the music that made him famous, Lydon constantly strove to move beyond his punk roots. Public Image Limited's second album, Metal Box, was an avant-garde masterpiece. We actually covered this record on Overthinking It back in the day. That's right, we're not just a YouTube channel, we're a 15-year-old pop culture blog. Please like and subscribe. Now, when Metal Box was reissued in 2016, it received a perfect score from the music website Pitchfork. And they do not give out those tens lightly over there. When Moneskin released its long-awaited 2023 album, Pitchfork gave it a two. Mamma mia! John Lydon kept trying new things for decades. In 1984, he teamed up with the South Bronx rapper and DJ Africa Bombada to produce one of the first rock rap songs ever. And in 1993, he worked with British electronic music pioneers Left Field to create a song that went to number one on the UK dance singles chart. To Leiden, the true punk spirit had nothing to do with a certain sound or dressing a certain way. It was about the freedom to do what you want and not care what other people think. I would never repeat myself. And I think everybody knows that about me. You might not like me, but at least I'm damn honest. By trying out for Eurovision with a song that's written for an audience of one, Leiden is showing us he's still got that spirit. <laughs> you serious? Now look, maybe I'm giving Leiden a little too much credit by suggesting that participating in the most mainstream musical contest in the world is actually a punk thing to do. South Park actually made this joke way back in 2004 about goths. I'm not doing it either. I'm the biggest nonconformist of all. I'm such a nonconformist that I'm not going to conform with the rest of you. Okay, I'll do it. But my point is, John Lydon doesn't seem to care about what his Sex Pistols fans want, and he doesn't seem to care about what the Eurovision voters want. He's just making the music that he wants to make. Wild Youth is making the music they think we want and doing a pretty bad job at it. If Ireland wants to climb out of the Eurovision basement, embracing a little bit of that punk spirit might be the perfect place to start. However, Ireland did score at least one win this year. Bailey's has been announced as an official Eurovision partner. Hopefully, California doesn't ban that too. We'll see you next time. The Danny Boyle miniseries is actually pretty good. Maisie Williams is in it, and she makes a surprisingly good punk. This time, she's assassinating the status quo.